are in a children's playground, a place for childhood innocence and purity. However, even childhood is not safe from corruption. In this documentary, we'll be discussing the widespread use and the harmful effects of the hateful and hurtful phrase, faggot, in terms of American youth. But what is faggot? Although the word has come to mean a gay slur in the past century, the word actually started out as something much different. It's looked to have originated in the 13th century, either in France with the term fagot, or in Italy with the term fagotio, both of which meaning a bundle of sticks. In British vernacular, it would also become used as a slang for these, cigarettes, a meaning for which it is still used today. However, it took on another meaning in England around 1590, which came to mean awkward baggage, which eventually became slang for a worthless woman. This is believed to have been the inspiration for the word's use in terms of gay men, due to their effeminate nature. The first use of the word in homosexual context was in 1914 by American authors who referred to weak or effeminate men as sissies or fags. In 1926, Ernest Hemingway used the word in his famed novel, The Sun Also Rises, in which he says, you're a hell of a good guy and I'm fonder of you than anybody on earth. I couldn't tell you that in New York. It would mean I was a faggot. But it's been a pattern that the survival of stigmas and ideas has always been left in the hands of the youth of the coming generation. It is up to them to determine what beliefs and concepts will make it on to the coming years. To more closely examine this concept, we traveled here to Scotch Plains Fanwood High School in Scotch Plains, New Jersey, an average school in an average town. Along with that, we interviewed teachers and students from the school to gain extra perspective. Mr. John Stack is a history teacher here at the high school as well as being the head coach of the Scotch Plains Fanwood football team. Ms. Wolgic is a veteran guidance counselor here at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School, dealing with emotional and disciplinary issues with students for almost 10 years. And we will also be interviewing the Scotch Plains Fanwood High School GSA, the Gay Straight Alliance, to find out their opinion. What was the general feeling towards homosexual students back when you were in high school? You know, when I was in high school, I, I, I definitely think you would see the word, referring to people as gay, as being weak or being stupid, the word fag was something that was definitely in the vernacular. Um, I, I, I do recall some gay students being harassed. Uh, I do recall a gay student, the word fag, being scrolled on his locker multiple times. When I was in high school, it was more of a don't ask, don't tell mentality. Students were not um, out at, as much at all. Um, if they were, it was students who were, once they came out, they were more, um, oh gosh, they made sure everyone knew. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't just, I'm accepting of my sexuality and I'm just going to be who I am. It was more, I have to portray a role. But what prompts youth to use such words as faggot and other sordid slurs? Is it outside influence? With the prevalence of social media and the focus on celebrities ever growing in today's day and age, what really has the impact on today's youth? What will influence them to say what they say? Some claim that the media is to blame. Throughout the years, in relation to all kinds of social issues, the media has often been a scapegoat for blame at the hands of different groups or organizations. And homophobia and the use of the word faggot is no different. Music, film, and celebrities have all fallen under the eye of scrutiny when using homophobic language. 
Groups like GLAAD have called out television, film, and musicians for their overuse of the word. Most famously, acclaimed rapper Eminem received heavy scrutiny after his album, The Marshall Mathers LP, contained heavy use of the word faggot and other homophobic language, 14 instances in total, helping make the year 2000 the most lyrically homophobic year since 1985. However, Eminem defended his use of the language in this famous interview. Eminem may be fiercely protective of his kids, but he's been accused of being harmful to just about everybody else's. The language he's used in songs sparked protests and accusations that he promoted violence against women and gays. He's been branded a misogynist and a homophobe. I felt like I was being attacked. Like you were being singled out. I was being singled out and I felt like, is it because of the color of my skin? Is it because of that you're paying more attention? Is it, is it because there's certain rappers that do and say the same things that I'm saying? And I don't hear no one saying anything about that. I didn't just invent saying offensive things. The scene that I came up in, that word was thrown around so much, you know? Faggot was like, it was thrown around constantly to each other, like, in battle. I don't have any problem with nobody, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just whatever. This is music, this is my art, this is what I do. However, Eminem is not the only artist in recent memory to come under fire. In Tyler, the Creator's Grammy-winning album, Odd Future, the artist used faggot a staggering 213 times. However, he defended his use of the word by claiming that the word was not offensive and by citing his friendship with gay musician Frank Ocean. He claimed that faggot is, quote, just a word. You can take the power out of that word. Do you think that artists uh, and creators have a responsibility to not use that word or do you think it's under their artistic freedom and that it's more of an individual choice to not use the well, phrase? Yes and no. They, uh, as, I mean, they have the freedom to say what they want, but I feel as a student that they should monitor what they say because they should not say what, they should say it in, a right, in the right context. I'm not saying that okay. the word faggot is a nice word, but it's just that they should use it in a rightful sense. Media is always going to do something wrong. People are always going to have their own thoughts, but you should have your own individual, like, set of mind. So, yeah. Yeah. To not be able, like, if you, um, not be able to say those things. Even visual media is not safe from defamatory slurs or unfair portrayals of gay characters. I know you're gay. How? How do you know I'm gay? Because you macrame yourself a pair of jean shorts. Ha! Gay! I'll turn that gay ass music on. You punch me because I'm gay? <laughs> what, what, what do we do now? We could hug. Yeah, you'd like that, faggot. I'm sorry. In the 2015 GLAAD Studio Responsibility Evaluation, it was noted that over 80% of all major studio films did not include any form of LGBT character. Comedy movies were by far the most inclusive in terms of LGBT. Quote, we found far fewer defamatory slurs in these films than we've seen in past years, but the jokes themselves typically run the gamut from pointless to offensive. However, 2015 has received a higher rating than previous years due to its inclusion of more out characters in major studio films, such as characters from How to Train Your Dragon 2 and Love is Strange, which may be leading towards a possible positive change in the portrayal of gay lifestyles and gay characters in major cinema. Mass media, television, and music has had on America's youth's perception of homosexuality and worked into the use of the word faggot. I think, to me, I think what you've seen, especially in the last decade, is you have seen, you have seen true gay characters that are not gay stereotypes that are not cartoon characters that are human beings with emotions that are that are fully developed characters on tv you still get the gay stereotype often uh you get the cartoon character gay character but you know what i always think is very similar to the um you know when you talk about the black characters the black in um in uh 
No, the black face paint. Black face. Black face. Thank you. <laughs> the, you know, when you're talking about blackface and the jazz singer uh, Amos, and Amos and Andy, the, these old iconic caricatures of black people, I think you you've still see that on time, times with gay people. But I think what you're seeing now is you're seeing LGBT characters and, uh, and um, celebrities being portrayed as fully fledged human beings. Well, I do think that the media, for the most part, has been much more positive regarding homosexuality. I think it's been, it's portrayed much more accepting. Um, the, as I said before, there are characters, many more characters in the media who are homosexual. Um, I don't, and this is just speaking as a person who loves pop culture, I don't see as much use of the word um, faggot as there is in outside of the media. I don't ever see it used um, in TV shows or movies or things like that, with the exception of when it's trying to be portrayed as an insult. So I don't think that the media is trying to make it mainstream, and I agree with that, I don't think it should be, but I love the fact that the media is being more positive towards um, the issue of homosexuality. And I can't wait for the day when it's not considered an issue. I think that media has a really big influence on that. I think that if there was a lot more representation of gay people and other LGBT people, um, and they weren't just represented as the stereotype that they were, a lot more people would be accepting and they would learn a lot faster because a lot of people don't think that media affects them that much, but it really does. So but no matter who is to blame, what effects will the word faggot have on a recipient? What kind of psychological damage can hate speech like this cause? Mm -hmm. Now, having been a guidance counselor for many years, mm -hmm. what have you is, ex observed about the effects homophobia and the use of the word faggot can have on students? Um, in the negative, I mean, there's nothing positive about homophobia or use of the, of the word faggot. Um, I've seen students' grades go down. I've seen students' anxiety levels rise significantly. I've seen students, unfortunately, have to leave school because of their level of anxiety and stress and fearing of what was going to happen when they came in. And it's not, it was not normally any sort of physical abuse, but it was the emotional abuse that they were suffering, um, that they would, it, the anxiety level would be through the roof. Uh, do you or does anyone in your close relations identify as LGBT? My family of eight people, um, I have eight people in my family, seven out of the eight of them identify as some form on the LGBT spectrum, including myself, I identify as bisexual, um, which means that I am attracted to both male and female. Okay. Now, with all that personal experience, what, ha what have you come to see, what damage can words like faggot do? to a person who identifies as LGBT. They could kill him. According to Gleason, 90% of LGBT students hear anti-LGBT comments in school. And on average, an LGBT high school student will hear 26 slurs per day. In one study, 28% of LGBT youth dropped out of school due to peer harassment. But, not everything is so bad for the LGBT community, especially here at Scotch Independent High School. Recent trends and major opinions have shown a positive change in people's outlooks on gay rights and the gay community. So, if we can hope, this may be the start of a new movement to eliminate hate, especially for those suffering due to their sexual orientation. Luckily, I mean, I think it's wonderful. There's been a much more acceptance. Um, it was it was good when I started here, the level of, of acceptance. I think in the last eight years, it's become, for the most part, much more tolerant, much more accepting, and much more kind of no big deal. You know, nobody, nobody needs to make a big deal of it because you are who you are. I definitely think what you see is indifference more indifference and then on the verge of acceptance. I don't think you see a lot of students being negative. For instance, in conversations in regards to gay rights and the LGBT movement, 
there's not a single student that would argue against gay marriage or against the, uh, the LGBT movement in the classes I've had. I have not had that kind of conversation with a student probably in close to a decade now.